Marino Frost again. Yes. You guys Thank are working you for together. Me. And in the audience, welcome very, very much to Conversations. Pleasure to welcome to the program a lovely young lady from Croatia, I think we're going to find originally. And her name is Gabriela Solomon. And she is, well, she's a, a published author and also an energy, energy, energy healing practitioner as well as the director of a multimedia project that I think you and Mario uh, worked together, yes. Marino worked together on called Mission of Love. Yes. And she's written a uh, book, she's got two of them here we got showing. One is called um, Past Life Journeys with Gay, Gay? Gaya. Gaya and Zen. Mm -hmm. And another one that had to do life in the jungle and then also life among Native Americans which Correct. are displayed here. And I think they're selling very well, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and she also has an appreciation of the phenomena of consciousness and channeling and uh, th those sort of things we're going to be talking about. And Gabriella, welcome so much to Conversations. It's a great pleasure to welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me. Please share with myself and the audience your background. I have the understanding you were originally from Croatia, but could you share where you were born and raised and that sort of yes. thing? Yes. A little mm. of your education. Yeah, in this life, I was born in Croatia. Okay. In Europe. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I, I actually moved to the United States five years ago. Only? Okay, welcome. Yes. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think it was meant to be. I, mm. was, I feel that I was called to come over here okay. so I can join the group of people uh -huh. that I work with on a very comprehensive multimedia project. Uh -huh. whose is that leader, the Mission of Love? Yes, Mission of Love, whose leader is Marina Frost. Okay, right. Uh -huh. And uh, in, in Croatia, it used to be part of what was Yugoslavia. Correct. North yes. more, up toward Ljubljana. No, no. Uh, Ljubljana is in Slovenia. Yeah. I was actually born very close. Belgrade? Is it Belgrade? In Belgrade was the capital city of Yugoslavia. Yeah. Ljubljana is the capital city of Slovenia, which was one of the republics. What in was the capital city of Croatia? Zagreb. Zagreb. That's Zagreb. down south. It's actually in the central part of Croatia. It is in the uh, south. Okay. Croatia. Have you I, ever been there? Yes, I have. In 1957, I went to Europe as a student with no money and touring around, hitchhiking and everything. And I decided instead of coming back to university in September, I would go and go through the Middle East. And uh, I did, as it happened. So I went through uh, from Trieste into Belgrade, into Yugoslavia. And is there a town, Skopje? Skopje, yes. That's I remember Macedonia. by the time you got down to Skopje, it was very distinct, Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you got down there, and by then the, the, the buildings were onion-shaped, yes. and you were into like a, a line you were crossing between north and south Yugoslavia, I remember very Yugoslavia much. Yugoslavia yeah. was also a melting pot, but yes. the place where I was born is very close to Hungary, uh, okay. close to Hungarian border, uh -huh. and actually uh, close to where Rudolf Steiner was born. Oh, wow, Rudolf Steiner. Actually, a couple of miles, yeah. yes, couple of miles from the place, from her, his birth town, this is where I was born and grew wow. up. Wow, Rudolf Steiner, I saw, if I'm correct, with anthroposophy? Yes, he yes. was the father of anthroposophy. Yes, a major figure. And now there's a woman, is Alice Bailey associated with that? Yes, yes. They actually, uh, they put together theosophy. Theosophy. But then anthroposophy uh -huh. was one branch of theosophy. I see, yeah. But he was a great thinker. Yes, indeed, and, and a spiritual. And I have a great connection to, to this uh, person, to this spirit, because I deeply believe that he's my spirit guide, yes, one of my spirit guides. I see, that's very interesting. And that's into another realm than normally we talk about reality in terms of politics yes. and all that. Yes. The questions of the spirit and the questions of other levers of consciousness and even the idea of past life experiences. Yes. And uh, Alice Bailey and uh, who's the other? There? Yeah, okay. Blavatsky. Madame Blavatsky, Blavatsky was another. Yes, there was yes. a, a lot of that kind yes, of thing yes. that was very influential. And that, it was interesting that All Steiner... All in New York, yeah, right? They, they came, came in New York, New York finally, but Steiner was from Croatia. Yes. Is Croatia... He was actually, when he was born, that was part of uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire. Okay, yeah. And he studied in Vienna. Uh -huh. But uh, still, yes, he was born at the same county in the same region as I did. And, and um, Croatia... 
because Yugoslavia was a country under Tito, yes. and then and then recently it broke up. Is there a Croatian language? Absolutely. There yes. is a distinct language. Yes, correct. And it, is it linked to Hungarian? No, 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 no. It's not. It has nothing to do with Hungarian. In Croatia, there were six different nationalities. They spoke six different languages, but they all understood each other because the languages all have the same root, which is Slavic. Really? Yes. Okay. Uh, and, and they can understand, like uh, somebody who knows Spanish can understand Italian, like Something that? Something like that. Like yes, that. It's yes, not just yes, a yes. dialect, like yes, a New Jersey yes, accent yes, or anything. Yes, yes, yes. It's a distinct language. It's a distinct and language. Uh, Serbian and Croatian is uh, pretty much close, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. But other languages are there. There, there's distinction between those six languages. And the and the political difficulties and that sort of thing that led to the establishment of these new countries. Yes. So you have a representative, the Croatia has a representative in the UN. Yes, yes. And so does uh, the, the others, All right? the others, yes. Okay, so that was Actually, a traumatic when, breakup. Uh, yes, and I was there present, witnessing, uh, witnessing it from the first hand because I was a teenager when the war broke right. in, uh, in my country. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, I was lucky enough not to be born at the uh, wars in the war zone, yeah, but okay. a little bit more north. Uh -huh. But still, I, um, I was. It was a very traumatic years. Yeah, you and were you uh, your education? Did you go university or uh, high school or what? I, yeah, I finished high school. But what I like to say is, uh, I finished University of Life. Okay. i I love to study. Uh huh. Um, and everything that interests me, I uh -huh. just go deep into it. I uh -huh. research it. I research the uh -huh, subject, uh -huh. and this is how I actually operate. I educate myself. They have a term, I suppose you're, I'm not sure if you're familiar, autodidact, do you know that term? No. It's a proud term, you would like to be able to wear a badge or something, uh -huh. and it's one that I have tremendous respect for. Mm -hmm. It means essentially self-taught. Yes. Or self-learning. Yes. Yes. yes, And I think that that's the only thing that ought to motivate learning rather than Yes. They got the education set up to where you have to learn a lot of things that are going to put you in good stead in a, uh, you know, in a, in a preview kind of way for something else you're going to learn. And you're having to learn a lot of things by rote, by yes. teachers who teach you how to not follow your own lead or interest. How did, but, you, how did you gain your knowledge, I wonder? Because you, you look and you sound like somebody, like like a walking encyclopedia. No, it's not true. I mean, well, it's just I'm interested in everything. I think there should be a division, uh, there should be a department in the University of Everything, yes. because everything is one Even system. reincarnation. Well, that's another, that's <laughs> another subject that I could talk to you about. I'm a little bit um, uneasy with that Why? in a certain sense. Why? Why is that so? If you want to talk about I'll talk about it. But I, I would love but to. I, very much, I, I think if you're if you're running after something and you're really curious, you look at a young child, a five-year-old, they're curious about everything. Yes. And creative. They had a, a series And talking of, about children. Yeah. Children, uh, if you have, have you ever heard of Dr. Ian Stevenson? No. Ian Stevenson was a um, professor at the uh, University of Virginia who right. had his own little department, a facility that actually stu studied um, uh, paranormal activities and he actually okay. put together a study of uh, um, a collection of uh, three almost over 3,000 confirmed cases of children all around the world who actually remember their past lives okay and that is uh, what I think my might, might get your interest because you are approaching reincarnation and past life from a very scientific perspective the same yeah. as dr. E late dr. Ewan Stevenson uh -huh. who did this amazing work That's where really he good. explored over as I said over 3,000 confirmed cases. He traveled in a span of 40 years. Uh -huh. He traveled all around the world mm -hmm. to actually to examine the cases of children between the age of three and five. Why that age? Because, uh, see, in that age, uh, people, uh, kids are the clo I cl I actually pure. Yes, They're I not agree brainwashed. Five-year-olds are my favorite human beings, yes. I think, yeah. Uh, they are not brainwashed through the educational system. They're honest. Yes, and they, they have their their mind, their subconscious mind, and conscious mind is just open, and they're so in touch with the spirit. And well, that's it, the part that I have a trouble with. Yeah. And their but, higher self mm -hmm. is actually 
sometimes just giving them information about themselves mm -hmm. from previous lives. Well, they're also very suggestive, I would think. I, I don't know the study. I'd be happy to look at mm -hmm. it. And that's yes. something I'm very nervous about, the, the spiritual thing. Why? I, 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 I just think it's been... You weren't nervous when you interviewed uh, Jane Roberts. I watched the interview. You did excellent well, job. Well, Jane, no, Jane Roberts became a friend. And she, yes. for those in the audience, she and Robert Butts, she was somebody who did what they call channeling. Yes. In these new age circles where they think about that. And mm -hmm. she was a wonderful person. I loved her as a person. She had arthritis, but she would go into a trance-like yes. state. Yes. Uh, like and Edgar then Casey. Talk and, and or, yeah, like a lot of those. And apparently from those... Uh, uh, they would give entry to the consciousness of those children you're talking about, mm -hmm. about what they call past lives. Mm -hmm. And she claimed to be, um, when she's in that trance state, not knowing it when she's in her normal Jane Roberts mm -hmm. state, uh, in touch with a spirit entity or something called Seth, yes. and had thoughts about consciousness and so forth that came out and Robert Buss took it down yes. and became the book, The it Seth Material, and that. And she was wonderful. She had a tremendous see, sense nowadays, of humor. Nowadays, you have conventions and you have a following, Seth conventions. People study those teachings that were passed through her. Yeah. It was like a, she was like what I like to call hollow bone. Uh, she was hollow, hollow bone. Hollow bone. Okay. That means a channel. Mm -hmm. uh, her mind, her consciousness and subconscious mind did not interfere. Mm -hmm. She was able to channel thoughts and mm -hmm. knowledge uh, from another entity mm -hmm. uh, that is obviously a discarnate entity. That was. Well, th those are all terms that I'm very, I mean, I'm familiar with uh, mm -hmm. anthroposophy, you know, all of that spiritual things, even on to what we call religion. Yes. And I'm very leery of it all, to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. much more so than I was then. I'm more interested in politics and the material world than a world meta to the normal world mm -hmm. uh, because I think... Uh, but material world is also a reflection of the spiritual world because a lot of things... Well, that's it's a like big a assumption. That's, that's a, a big a assumption. Yes. Yeah, and that's what I distrust. And mm -hmm. I distrust the people who have some notion about the way the universe is set up in mm -hmm. larger meta terms um, for reasons of my own because... Uh, but I did like, I loved her very much, and she, she went into Seth's state when I was there, <laughs> and it blew the roof off the ceiling because wow. she was very feminine yes. in her normal being. And uh, then when she went in, she would go, and she had a rocking chair, and she said, good evening, and this very <laughs> masculine voice came through. And then she was talking and channeling is the term that you use, psychic and so forth, uh, for this other uh, state of consciousness. Yes. And, but um, the, book, the books that I, I wrote, heard, I liked very much. Yeah. The books that I wrote, are, which uh, two books, Life in the Jungle and Life Among Native Americans, they're yes. part of this collection of books that I'm writing. Five books. Best five. five. Yes. Uh -huh. You've written two of the five. Yes. Okay. So uh -huh. far, two are published, and uh -huh. I'm going to be writing three more. Okay. They're all part of big collection of stories, which. There's a broad spectrum of how you can read those stories. You mm -hmm. can read them from perspective of somebody who just likes to read life stories. Uh, uh, there's uh, stories with a moral, ba you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, things about um, society from the past because in my, in my book, Life in the Jungle, I write about the society uh, in 90, nine, uh, 950 A.D. in South America, uh, nine, nine, what, 950 A.D. 950 10th AD. century, yes. Okay, okay. In uh, yeah. what is now Braz uh, Brazil, South uh -huh. Brazil. That's where so it you takes can, place? Yes, that's yeah. where it takes place. So you can you can read it from a historical point of view because I did a very extensive research uh -huh. and through my own intuition I put together a story which is which is also has the flavor of history, uh, mm -hmm. his historical story, mm -hmm. life story, love story, mm -hmm. but you also you can read it from a perspective of... Uh, for those who are opened and ho those who believe in reincarnation and past yeah. lives, uh -huh. there's a lot of messages and a lot of um, knowledge that I passed on uh, through this uh, through this stories. And do you count yourself a channel? Do you channel, or do you be in touch with people who channel, or how do you, or do you claim that these books are 
from another realm or from another level of consciousness than our normally accepted research in the library type thing? Uh, I worked, I hired, in 2007, uh, I hired a very gifted medium. A medium, he's okay. A, he's a Reiki master. Uh, Reiki, okay, basically. that's Japan, yeah. But uh, I that's had healing, a, yeah. Yes, I had a very short session uh, at Edgar Casey Center, 15 mm -hmm. minutes, and he was doing a, a Reiki session on me, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden he began speaking uh, thoughts from my uh, deceased mother. Who, pa oh, uh -huh. who passed message in of, Croatian? Uh, no, in, not in Croatian. There was a few words actually. In, he, he he doesn't speak any Croatian, of right, course. Right. But he was he wrote them down, and uh -huh. I was like, wow, he's mm. a genu he's genuine medium. Mm. Okay, yes, yeah. It's because there's a lot of those who are, you know, unfortunately, mm -hmm. who are fake, mm. unfortunately, which does a lot of damage to mm -hmm. this beautiful realm of knowledge. Mm. And, and service, yeah, well, because mediums mm -hmm. were of service to humankind, like Edgar Cayce, he did so many uh, wonderful uh, uh, readings where he diagnosed sicknesses of people, and it happened at his center in, uh, uh, in Manhattan. Uh, in Manhattan, he had one down in Virginia Beach, too. Edgar There's Cayce. one, yes. ERA or A -R -A. Yeah, yeah, Edgar Cayce. Yeah. But it's also interesting because uh, the, the medium that I worked with, mm -hmm. uh, I had no, you know, I'd, I was not actually even interested to, uh, to, to work with a medium regarding my interest to explore my past lives. I was, I was rather more interested to hire a hypnotherapist uh -huh. to go in hypnosis and to yeah. retrieve the knowledge yeah. about that, my That past I'd be life. more comfortable with. Yeah. Yes, but uh, my spirit guides, they gave me, they told me uh, he's not the, the person, the hypnotherapist that I wanted to hire, they told me he's not the right questionnaire. Meaning he's not the right captain. Mm -hmm. I'm embarking myself on a journey, but mm -hmm. I'm choosing a wrong captain. Mm -hmm. A few days later, I went to Edgar Casey Center. I met Sam, and all of a sudden, this idea was like, I asked him, Sam, would you be able to ask spirits, since, since he's a medium, he's a hearing medium, he hears, mm -hmm. he discarnates spirits. Okay. Would you be able to ask them about my past lives? What he says, we can try, but it all depends on the permission from the divine power. It all depends. See, those things really bother me, but go <laughs> ahead, yeah. I, uh, I understand, mm. I understand everybody's point of view. Mm. I'm not here to push any, no, no, I understand, uh, yeah. to push any knowledge. Mm. I'm just sharing my experience with you because I believe it's just yes, a absolutely. very interesting experience. And there's a rich tradition and, and there's a great deal for us to try to be open to. Yes, If we yes. can, you know, but you had, uh, you know, you had Madame Blavatsky yes. and, and Alice Bailey and a great deal Absolutely. of thought. And then uh, seers of things, you had Nostradamus. Yes. And you had all these kind of things that are coming from assuming some contact with the Akashic record. Or yes. that everything, nothing yes. is lost, it's all there. And all of these things are things that we would really want to believe for sure. Yes. And they're there. And then you also got a near-death experience. Correct. And then you have people who have these channeling of past lives. And Jane Roberts definitely had the idea yes. of past lives. And uh, the, maybe the grandfather of it all in the modern is L. Ron Hubbard. It became Scientology, but he believed in past lives. Yes. And that uh, it, that was done psychotherapeutically. They had engrams, mm -hmm. they had all this kind of thing. Uh, but you're, you're, you're going through past life experiences as a human being, or, or uh, I guess even as creatures. I don't know. It's there. But that they think there's a reincarnating spirit that motivates the evolutionary process. Yeah. And so forth, I guess, right? Well, and there's the, a lot of interesting things that come out of that. When yeah. you see, when you see, uh, people are so different. There are people. People are on different levels, yeah. of intellectually, morally, mm -hmm. and spiritually. So well, uh, spiritual, yeah. Well, it, let's let's narrow it down to intellectually and morally. Well, if those two things you can deal with in, within the normal dialectic of understanding yes. society. Yeah. But do you Ethics think, do so you forth. think that um, whoever created us, let's call this, well, the, yeah. or we didn't just, I, I don't know, what is your perspective well, on Well, I, I, I just did a program that aired a couple of days ago. It was really interesting to me. I don't know, universe to this one, and there may be parallel universes, string yes. theory says, but it is about, what, 13.7 or 8 billion years. And life appeared about four billion years ago on this planet, out of primordial mix. And how we got to be were from from material, from mineral or from sub sub organic elements mm -hmm. to make the bridge to where evolution began. It, uh, that was some a leading scholar in how that happened. That the l organic process happened on this planet. Huge question of beginning in terms of evolution, and that I believe in. And once you get to that, I guess it's about eight tenths is nothing but bacteria. 
developing, <laughs> and then it comes, and then you can understand the existence of all the varying life forms through understanding evolution Science without that. any notion of a spirit who set it up or a creator or the basis of most of the religious systems that we've used throughout human existence in order to answer the question of some homo sapiens self-reflective consciousness about like what's it all about so they've dreamed up stories uh, creation stories and things that are larger than the normal context yeah. that the enlightenment and the intellectual process has given us a window to now and so that's what i trust the evolutionary yeah. story as it evolves and how new species appear and the material reality mm -hmm. So that would but be like an enlightenment secular kind yeah, of thing, distrust yes. of anything spiritual yes, or yes. anything meta to the ordinary well, material can, evolution uh, see, at this stage. Well, you can also you can also tra translate spiritual as an energy because everything is energy. When well, when you walk, when uh -huh, you talk, uh -huh. you're you're a living being who is using certain energy to do to do your yes, daily task. But when it's thermodynamics, when, and yeah, it can but, all be understood in terms of physics. But and in terms of evolution when, and natural what happens, processes. But what happens when, when a person passes away? There's no uh, more well, of this I, energy. Well, if you ask me, my, my inkling, I can't. No, but I also live, if I may, we're talking personally here a little bit. Sure. We want to get to your thing, really. you got some clips and stuff. Um, uh, I mean, um, I'm open to any, I believe in synergy, the behavior yes. of systems unpredi and a priori mystery. And that you have synergy, and there are levels of understanding that are made manifest and everything, but that um, that's that's all that we we live in it, and we're coming to understand it. And those higher levels, and trying to take a reading of the way the universe, or what some god thinks the way the universe should be set up, to give a sense of identity. Mm -hmm. And it's important. It's been important, like um, tales. Yeah. And so that's the way I see all that stuff. And the spiritual thing, for us being able to fulfill our purpose in an evolutionary, scientific sense, then we may get to a state transcendent to what we've been for 200,000 years, our species. We have a state of consciousness. We have a conscious, unsubconscious mind. There are morphic fields. We have all kinds of things. We're coming to understand it intellectually. Yes. So what's going on? Rather than listening to the stories of the shamans or the people who were thought of as being spiritually endowed with some sort of an understanding of the well, way the universe way is set up. Shaman. I'm distrustful of all mm -hmm. that. Uh, no. Your distrust, mm -hmm. what I feel, is actually deeply, deep interest in, in this because we interest all, in everything. You interest are, in everything. But you are very open, and you are actually very, you are a very open person. Mm. You are a very open person, and distrust is the first step towards that interest to explore something new. No, I'm not. I, the only thing I'm distrustful are the people who want to go outside of what we know. I mean, to set up patterns for the universe and reality in terms of the universe. I distrust all of them because these are, these are things that we may be coming to where we know. We're yes, coming we to are. It's like, like if we were Australopithecine four million years ago, we would not be able to even come close to understanding neurotransmitters of the way the mind works or the subconscious. There's an evolutionary process and we're building up that line. And so what, as soon as they got to I don't know, Cro-Magnon or whatever, it, people wandering around in the mud and, uh, you know, and that ev evolving after 200,000 years, they would come up with stories. And there were storytellers. And then there were people who would come up and it would be a way to get power over people when you get them to believe in some sort of a creation and that the great God of the universe says you should go out and kill these people. They would go out and kill them. And that's what they've done with alarming regularity well, as a propaganda thing. Yeah, and and a way of manipulating, gaining power in order for some group to do it and all that. Well, my, my History is a nightmare from which we're attempting to awaken, and that includes nature. My mission is very simple. Okay. If I, if I, could, if I could help people overcome and eradicate fear of death, I would be happy. Well, that's a biggie. That is so a biggie, the, and that's that, why a lot were, of these... Those were the reasons why I actually wrote this book, because I wasn't even planning to write them in the first really, place. Really? You just came upon it? No, yeah. I, I found out I, through sessions that I ha have. Mm. After Edgar Casey Center, yeah. a quick session with the medium, mm -hmm. I hired him. I, we had, in Marino's studio, we recorded 14 sessions where I asked questions, and medium Sam, he was giving me answers. I mean, he was channeling answers. Yes. Uh -huh. And I... I I was not even interested in yeah. you know in anything except to find out why all these obstacles in the way of Marino's life and work because he 
there were so many um, various blows and obstacles in his life that it just was mind-boggling for me. I wanted to know maybe there was something in the past, you know, like hidden karma or something in the past that we had to dig out to see why is this happening. Mm -hmm. This is similar as hypnotherapists yeah. do when yeah. they regress people who are, ex for example, a, 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 you know, addicts, different yeah. drug addicts. Yeah, right. They go back in past. They they experience certain things about their themselves in the past within and they their own get existence. Over. Yeah, within yes. their own existence. But I don't know how many people also, go to past, past lives. Past right, regression is. Uh, have you heard of Brian Weiss? No. You haven't heard of Brian Weiss. No, Brian I haven't. Weiss. Uh, he he did a lot to actually to promote uh, uh, life after life life uh, uh, life before life. Also Raymond Moody. Raymond Do Moody. He went did a lot in Connecticut about the near death experience. Yes. 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 See, that's yes. phenomenal. He, he, the white light was, and everything. Yeah. Yes. And see, great numbers was, of people experienced this. He was. This, yeah. He was. Um, he was the first, my first big discovery, yeah. Raymond Moody, because yeah. I was it's 11, amazing. How I was many... 11 years old when right. I found this book in the oh. library. Yeah. What I read was it first? The standard a life book? After, uh, life After Death, yeah, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Life After Death, that mm. was the book that I yeah. read. Yeah. Uh, and uh, after, in the, in the back of the book was a scenario for uh, actually, for self-hypnosis, mm -hmm. where, where you go back it, through your down your uh, you know memory lane down the timeline of your life lives actually because you go well, that, past. Well, that's a big jump. And lives, I, yes, and rather I, than life. And I decided to actually test this on my sister mm -hmm. who was three years younger than me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was able to regress her even though I was eleven. What does years that mean, regress? Regress her, take her back in her memories of things that did not happen in this life, but in some other. That's a big jump. Yes. To go from one life to uh, many past lives. Yes. Yeah, that's a big, big jump. But uh, because I, I think that's all made up, <laughs> you know, or something out of the subconscious mind or something. Or well, that's my feeling. Well, subconscious I mean, mind I know the, is the, the library of our is a library of our memories. Yeah, but it's other memory in an individual. Yeah, they have that. But to say that I and I my my inclination in terms of your question, what happened? That's the biggest mm -hmm. question, maybe. Who is somebody who writes really well in that? I can't remember. Uh, Eric? Some, no, somebody writes on death. That that's the biggie that we have to confront. Because I, I don't think creatures are very aware of that even, or it doesn't enter into their minds. But it's a great fear that it has to be got over. And so we have these myths about how there's something after life, or there's more than just this life. But there and was so always interest in so every you culture. You asked me what my thought was. Yes. And my thought is that. Um, when you die, that's the end of your existence, and that's it. And then new forms come. I don't think there's any connection to past lives or reincarnation where does your or energy, any of those things. What do you Buddha. see? Where, where does your consciousness go when you die? Obviously, your your consciousness, is. does it stay present with your decaying body? Does it turn to dust? What happens? I don't understand what you mean. Your conscience, your conscience is the operating of your mind. Okay, let's say subconscious, the energy, the, en the energy that runs conscious, your body. Yeah. Well, the energy dissipates. You have photo, you have... Uh, energy? You join entropy, Never that's all. Energy goes from one form Do to another. Do you think the same thing happens for a crocodile or for an eel or for a, a, a tulip? I mean, is it all interconnected in everything? Everybody keeps going forever and everything you think like that? Those are myths to me. Mm -hmm. And those are things that feed into what the human being wants to have. But the truth of the matter is when you die, that's the end. But then I guess... That's all, and there's no connection. I guess, I guess... Yeah. I guess, mm. I guess in that case, mm. you would like to read my books as a history. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. I would read because them, yes, Life absolutely. Among Native Americans mm -hmm. is uh, one interesting book that actually has many details about uh, a, a life among Coast Salish Indians, uh -huh. Native Americans. That's very interesting. It was in Brazil, you said. And was this took this place This was in, in Brazil. Life in a Jungle, this was in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, you know Iguazu Falls on the border? Iguazu, yeah, yeah, I know it's over there. One. I've not been there. But I did I did live uh, about two years in Bolivia with really? the Altiplano people there and was very interested in the uh, Aymara people mm -hmm. and the nation of the Aymara people in Bolivia. That's because beautiful. it's a cultural hearth. Yes. Where this Paleolithic peoples moved through to Neolithic and then even on into high civilization. And I can understand it in that way. 
and I read a little bit of a Van Donegan with the Nazca lines and everything. And I can understand that he's trying to reach for some sort of a thing from above has to do and every, and it just comes right out of a normal understanding of uh, of, con of of human history, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in an evolutionary process on this third planet in the universe, and there are no gods, or there are no f there are no fairy tales or anything like that. Mm -hmm. and that's what I think, you know. So uh, it would life, be life if you if you've got in stream of consciousness got a, a, a an insight into what gave you the basis for the book. Fine, then you've got a fiction piece of book that you can write and put it out, and that's good. Yes, also I mean the the structure of the stories. Mm -hmm. were actually channeled, but there was channeled a is a very interesting term. <laughs> but see? yeah, yeah, that's like Jane but Roberts. Th that was yeah. th uh -huh. th that was just the structure, mm -hmm. like a foundation. But then yeah. I had to fill up the gaps, and I have to build a house. Because well, you'd I have to tell a story, like yes, James Joyce. Exactly. Yeah. So what I did is I did a lot of research. Yes. I went Good. to the libraries and I studied, mm -hmm. but I also. My research came also from the heart. What I feel, my intuition, how I feel that got life got nothing could be. against intuition, the heart, and mm -hmm. any of those things. Nothing like that. It's just the spiritual part, or the past lives part, or the higher levels part that bother me. Yeah. Because I think that's all just fake, or it's coming out of a normal understanding of biological evolution mm -hmm. within a world run by you know thermodynamics, and mm -hmm. it's understood by the physics and everything like that, and it's moving through. And one mm -hmm. would hope we might be able to get to another stage beyond where we are now in an evolutionary understanding without any gods or any of those kind of supernatural elements being relevant at all, except through psychological processes of neurotransmitters. I would, I um, would, uh, I ratios. wouldn't feel comfortable uh, knowing that after I died, there's nothing left of me. Why? That is the truth. Do you think a crocodile feels the same, or well, do you think a dinosaur a they die? Crocodile is uh, not a human being. No, I know, but the it's difference. A is, so it's realm. only the human being that is involved in this. No, no. or does it involve all creatures, Ener like the Buddhist energy, thing? All energy moves and tra energy, energy, yeah. tra energy shifts from one. Uh, one life form to another. Well, yeah, it does. It's called punctuated equilibrium when a new form appears out of the evolutionary. We can understand it. Yes. What we can do is we can understand things and don't have to, uh, you know, imbue them with uh, all kinds of creation stories and things to give, to mm -hmm. fill that need for human beings to understand what's it all about, Alfie. Mm -hmm. And so what the uh, Enlightenment's making, we can do it without resorting to the fairy tales, that's all. Uh, well, like religion. Yes. And gods and things like that, you know. Uh, and uh, I can understand the need for them, and people I, want a basis one, of ethics level, or understanding. On one level, I have a lot of resentment towards those uh, religious interpretations of gods because they're on a very low intellectual, I mean, they're on a very low level of um, intellectual and moral evolution. Well, uh, and you they're mean, contradictory to each other. Well, that informs virtually all of our spiritual systems. Lao Tzu, Confucian, Buddha, uh, uh, Jesus, all of our religious traditions have been the basis for great wars being done in the name of yes. political power and everything. Yes. Yeah. But I separate religion as an institution mm -hmm. and sp spirituality. Well, they, all right. Well, they, uh, unfortunately, a lot of them, uh, they take, um, they, they, they take copyrights on uh, uh, on spirituality. Well, if you got in, in a way, they, yeah. they think that they're the only one who can interpret uh, right. I I spirituality. And my spirituality is better than yours. Yes, and, and that's this why is what I've got I the right to raise an army and throw you into the ocean. That, yeah. the, well, that's, that's a, what it's that's been used for. That's a, just a reflection of uh, of uh, um, uh, actually a low low level. Uh, you know, spirits who are on a very low level. Well, there are no spirits, <laughs> okay? There is no how level you, of spirits okay, or anything. How, how do you call then that energy that, that runs everything, that runs the show? That well, I would say the closest thing to a common thing is just thermodynamics. It's thermodynamics? The, it's, yeah, it's the thermodynamics. All systems move toward entropy to the limits of the system, closed system. Mm -hmm. And it may be the biological process is moving across entropy and bringing an increased con uh, conscious pattern to the larger uh, un understanding, conscious understanding of the larger system. Mm -hmm. We now take the measure of this universe right down. We're going to have a CERN. They're going to have a thing where they can take the measure of the Big Bang 13.8. Is it seven, eight billion years ago? 
within a nanosecond of its occurrence from the shockwave. That's pretty good ability yeah. to take the measure of things consciously, rationally, mm -hmm. intellectually, honest, without resorting to understandings about, but the God wouldn't make it possible because of some law that came down from somebody who wanted no. to get political power. That's the, that's the story of most of those things, in my view. So we've well, got that. Unfortunately, because that the religion recognize. and science are always in a clash, but mm. ultimately, they'll have to work together. Well, they'll be subsumed. I yes, think they that, will be uh, subsumed, like yeah. Freud said, right? Yeah. They will all melt into into one. Well, I do. I do thought. think that it is all one system. Yeah, it's it's all one system. But all these things about Based past lives and gods and Jesus and all of that. I mean, it's a basis for ethics. I, mm -hmm. I agree. I'm a humanist. Yes. I'm not a religion yeah. person. Neither I think it I means am. to hold. And I, the idea of trying to get between humanism and religion with something called spirituality is just a cop-out on the side of uh, the meta well, reading I of wouldn't. things. And there should be a station between that where you read the meta within the context of the material development mm -hmm. that is uh, uh, that is meta to the normally accepted understanding of things coming out of historical mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. We should have that, but stick within the material mm -hmm. until we get to a point where in a synergistic residency there will be a new understanding, then we'll be able to address the universe, but we can't do it from inside the womb. We're inside the womb and we're trying to put a pattern upon outside the womb in terms of these spiritual questings and storytelling and power grabbing in the name of having a take on the way the well, universe in, well, is set up. Well, in that up. case, as I said, uh, in that case, uh, you would definitely love to read my books from uh, from a different perspective. Yes, from a stream of content are, like are, Faulkner or Joyce or something. Yes. Or stream, yeah, I'd like well, that. Yeah. Or maybe even uh, to to bring it even closer to you visually. Maybe we can uh, run that. Uh, oh yes, trailer. you have a tape. Yes, right, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'm sorry. We, we, we do. We should run the and tape. And ha we have two DVDs, yes, and I think our is, equipment is isn't uh, as good as it should be to show it in its full uh, glory, but let's should run fine, the tape. But, or, but, uh, could you, could uh, you set it yes, up? Yes, we, we'll, we'll run Life in the Jungle now. Uh, uh, it's a book trailer that I created, which, which okay. actually... It would be more visual. Yes, right, and it'll set it up. That's very good, and we'll do that. And you have one for the other too. Yes, yes. That's great, by all means. And this is a um, so let's set that DVD up and run that. This Life in the Jungle. Yes. And it's a trailer about the book and about uh, Zen and uh, the journeys of Gaia and Zen. And it Correct. was it was part of it was the, uh, the whole story was partly through channeling. Yes. With another level yes. of consciousness. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay.
That's really good. That's a great beat. I think the story is great. Oh, I love it. I think it's great. It's really good. It'd make a good. Hope you got the option for the full movie. It all worked out. Yes, with actually, Gilbert. yes, definitely. Mm. Uh, we even had some. Uh, uh, <laughs> It was just something. Go ahead. Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, it would definitely, it's so visual. The story is so uh, beautiful and it would make a great movie. Yeah, and actually, right. a lot of people who saw this trailer and yeah. the, uh, the graphics, uh -huh. they said that would make a wonderful movie. Yeah, so I think true. everything makes a wonderful movie. Now, we're moving into multimedia the way we haven't in the past, so everything's becoming a movie. And multimedia is really in now. Yeah. yeah. Talking about multimedia, uh, uh, Marino Frost, who I'm writing about in this books, mm -hmm. also is uh, is the leader of this uh, huge multimedia project, mm -hmm. and I'm a director of the uh, multimedia project uh, that encompasses various forms of art, uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, music, creative writing, digital graphics, mm. but it also philosophy. He yes. wrote uh -huh. principles. Uh, I, you're familiar with his principles. Yes. We talked about in your Thanksgiving we show have, yeah, with right. him uh -huh. about that. Uh, so uh, I'm a director of that project. Okay, and, good. It's uh, called the Mission of Love. Is yeah, it? it's called yeah. Mission of Love. And it's a multi. It's a multi. It's a, a, coll a collaborative thing around the arts and the concept yes. of love. Yes, correct. A big concept. Yes, yes, yes. Right. yes. And my books uh -huh. are part of that project uh -huh. because everything always boils down to love. Whatever you do, it's that's the that's the that's the strongest force strongest force uh, that that surrounds us love uh, if there would you know and uh, it's it's the basic foundation of the project that we mm -hmm. work on to uh, spread good messages and to spread the energy of love through art because uh, art speaks all languages absolutely yeah. and it's so easy to get people's attention sure. uh, uh, through art yes uh, yeah. everybody's I so couldn't agree with you more yeah yeah yeah, Go ahead. yeah. poetry yeah yes yeah. poetry short you know yeah. uh, the books that I'm writing as I said there it's it's also a love story but it's also a story of survival uh, life in the jungle the trailer that you've seen um, and uh, it, it ties in beautifully to this project because as I said the intention is actually to uh, to help people understand that love is the most important thing uh, okay, I think that the Beatles said that all we need, all we is, need is love, love. <laughs> yes. yes. Ba -ba -ba -da. Yeah. that's true right love is a biggie and uh, okay, yeah. It was because of love that I, I came. Yeah. I, I came to Earth in you. It was because of love that we exist. It was because of love that I came to New York and connected to Marina Frost. Uh, mm. It was because of love that I wrote this book because I love people. How how is it that you have a connect? How why are those things that happen to you in the name of love only? Because why is it the name of happenstance or chance and necessity? Uh, I, I wouldn't say in the name of love, but this is, as I said, this is this is something um, that is a guiding force for me. For me, that's a guiding force. Guiding force. Well, love. Yeah. It's yes. The thing. Yes. Because I have, I have love for people, and I want to do whatever I can in this life mm -hmm. to help as many people know love and walk in love. And basically, to 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 evolve because love is the highest level. Well, I, oh, okay, uh, these, these are just, I, it gets to be like a you know Oxford debating society <laughs> or something. Definition of terms, ma'am. You know, yes. love is a biggie, and it's a synergistic resonancy too between systems. Is a it's not tactility, it's not touch, it's a resonancy between maximally engaged systems. And systems study is really interesting, and so love is a state of mind and that sort of thing. It's associated very often with a man-woman thing, but it's also love of baby, love of yes. country, love of, love of, then it can get into love of country and patriotism love and things. Love for Professor love can be, Channer. Love can be also very uh, propagandistically used to manipulate people, People who are innocent can everything, be. Everything, you know, everything, everything yeah. that is pure is always uh, can always be turned uh, into negative. Right. Because there's always people who will uh, who will who will press their own agendas into something as pure as love, and they will. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it's just a huge word, isn't it? It's yes. Like you see, you gave a couple here. They're like fear, uh, you know, <laughs> death. That's a biggie. <laughs> and then love. These are a couple of very, very big concepts. And that's what your overall concept uh, or the project, the mission yes. of love, yes. is that in order to draw upon 
how the art can be. I love the movie Moulin Rouge. You ever see the Moulin Rouge? I heard about it. The I one, the modern one. I haven't seen it. No, it's I haven't seen great. it. It's great, and it's all in the name of love that she, you know, it's a. That's it, interesting it, because great well, movie, great uh, the, movie. The story, the story, uh, somehow correlates to the the next book that I'm going to be writing about life in Chicago. Okay. Uh -huh. Which is the most uh, uh, recent. Uh, Life, where, mm -hmm. where Marino and I were working as entertainers. Okay. Where he was a multi-instrumentalist in Chicago in 1920s, uh, uh -huh. and I was a dancer. And you actually feel, now if I may, I don't mean to sure. be, you actually feel you're drawing off experiences that have been made manifest to you that your spirit entity or your entity, you, you mm -hmm. were at that situation, and you believe that. Uh, I feel it, I believe it, and but I don't push that knowledge to anybody, neither, you know, to you or anybody. I'm just here to share my experience. But also, let but me tell you... But that's not your experience, that's the experience that you're conjuring. I, my, experience of, uh, my experience in regards of uh, how I found out about this, how I found, found out, out how, about the Chicago, how, the yes, people in Chicago. Yes, you did research yes, in yes. the library with uh, cards no, and reading. No, uh, not yet, but I will do that. But yeah. also uh, during sessions, the structure was given to me. Oh, in the you in the channeling session. Yeah, you know how oh. it started. It started uh, with Sam said, um, "Do you ever? You have a pain in mm -hmm. your right knee," and mm -hmm. I was like. Yes, and nobody knows that. Mm -hmm. I've never shared this with anybody. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I have mm. a just unexplained pain in my knee, and the, you yeah. know, it just comes and goes. Yeah. And he told me, uh, the, this is the memory on your past injury from, the lo from past life when you were a dancer, mm -hmm. and you broke your leg in this, on the stage. Mm -hmm. So this memory comes through as a pain sometimes. Mm -hmm. When I was writing Life Among Native Americans, yes. Um, I had a pain in my, um, append uh, you know, ab ab abdomen. Yeah. It was a memory of my uh, appendicitis because I almost died in that life. Marina was a healer who saved me from death. But you're having had this experience with the channeling of him yes. telling you you had a dancing accident in Chicago. Yes. It, it you you don't see you see that is something that is, man is real. I mean th that which has been revealed. Is the basis now of it's your? A, it's a, it's now it's part of the memory, but it was real, like it's real. Now we're talking in the real. The only real moment that we have is now. Yes, right, exactly. So yeah. everything that is a matter that is uh, all the moments that were behind us mm -hmm. are matter of past, mm -hmm. and past is saved on in our memory. Yeah, okay. You know, uh, subconscious mind and yeah. the other levels. Or engrams. Oh, oh, uh, uh, L. Ron Hubbard thought engrams, and it said it also has con it also has connections to. Ailments, so there's a mm -hmm. healing process. Scientologists is there now. It, it's interesting word. Healing is a very interesting word because there a lot of uh, healing comes through knowing and awareness of uh, of uh, of your mission and w what you were doing in the previous lives. Yeah, the life that comes. That I, uh, also, but since we mentioned the uh, life among Native Americans, yeah, we have another you, trailer. Do you think we can? We got, watch well, that we one? got, yeah, we got about t almost eight, nine minutes, so we okay. can get in. It's about three or four minutes. Yes, three and minutes. And it's another trailer similar in in style to yes. the one we had. Yes, correct. And this one's it's about. It's a story about. Uh, uh, Up in the northwest yes. of North, yeah. Coast Salish. Yeah, Coast so Salish. let's let's go see. Native Americans. Let's see if we can set that up also because it's really beautifully done. Great music, great artfully done. Great uh, potential for a blockbuster movie by Mr. <laughs> Spielberg or something like that at DreamWorks. Are we going? Yeah.
Joe Feely, that's really great a score. <laughs> Tremendous score. Tremendous. I started to sing, we should recommend this Mr. Spielberg. I don't think you have to go Mr. Feely. You all can do it, man. That's really beautifully done. Thank you. I'm glad really you like it. Really great. I mean, it's a source, great music, great artistic uh, yes. reading and everything like that. It's great in and of itself. That's a, tra that's a trailer for another film, or that's, that's not? That's a trailer for a book that I created. For the book, from right. From the new book, Life Among so the Americans. So you haven't seen this as the uh, Renaissance screenplay. Could you put it together? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It would okay. make a great movie. It would yeah. Make you all think you're, you're all thinking of doing that? Uh, or is that too, too big a project or something? Uh, yes, definitely. I know this will happen mm -hmm. because... Uh, the spirit tells you so. Yeah, <laughs> that is so right, true. Right, and see, right. The, uh, d didn't you say it would make a great movie? When you have so many people saying the same thing, then the message is being sent out. And well, you, yeah, it's not too good for me because I just think life would make a great you, movie. In fact, you, I think it is a great movie. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it, is. Uh -huh, yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was really good, but uh, that's really good, and, I, and I'm, I'm really pleased that you've been able to do that. And Mario's great. Marino. Uh, the mission, <laughs> Marino. I'm sorry, yes. I keep saying Mario. I think. <laughs> He's Italian. He's Croatian, right? Yes. But he's a great guy and everything, and really talented and a great group of people. Yes, and I'm and really proud that I actually am, I was, I'm honored to work around him in, okay. the, in the environment of such yeah. a great environment very of this creative, project that, yeah. that we yeah. do. Yeah, it's very creative, the whole Eastern. Yes. And yes. the thing is, but uh, the mission of love again, maybe we can get back to that because that's an overall arching thing. Does it include filmmaking? Does it yes. include it's like distribution the, and business and things absolutely. like that? Okay, absolutely. Okay, okay. Right. This mission of love is like an umbrella that covers my work, Marino's work, and work of other people who uh, who are part of the team mm -hmm. and we certainly uh, are working on bringing this into uh, you know and on a in a pu in to, pu to public right present it Good. and uh, uh, hopefully uh, attract uh, business people who will see the potential who will eventually put this big great show where a multimedia show where uh, people could see marina playing his music where people could see uh, spiritual philosophy presented through uh, attractive visual forms through yeah, graphics. Right, right. Uh, All of which is available to us the way it's never been before. Yes. You know yes. something else that's going on? I could just tell you, we did a program with Carter Emmert. He's the director of astral visualization mm -hmm. at the uh, planetarium here in New York, one mm -hmm. of the big ones in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's the big, biggest video display screen in the world are wow. the planetarium. Mm -hmm. And it's coming exponentially out of the labs now to the ex We're going to be swimming in bandwidth when wow. they get the economics right. They're going to be getting that, and there's going to be even be building into architecture at the residential level a kitchen, a bedroom, a dining yes. room, and a planetarium. And it's going to be home hemispheric. I think there's four arrays. Yes. And the prices are coming down to where you'll be able to have that as a venue for distribution of, um, of, of, of programming. And these ideas and the things, art, it could be, yes. that's the thing just to keep in mind because it's coming. Absolutely. And so there's uh, various ways to do it. The holography is around the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, these kind of things are going to make all kinds of expressions of the spirit well, next, and of next artistic. Thing, next thing, you know, we're going to have a hologram of you uh, interviewing. Hologram. A hologram of me. Holograms will be coming probably <laughs> sooner than we knew. They, it, it's coming. And uh, I, I remember when Jane Roberts uh, came out, and she and Seth, and he was very powerful, the voice coming through yes. her and everything. And you could ask questions to say, what's the state of consciousness or something? And the only thing I wanted to ask him was, the only thing I wanted to know, this is from another level of reality, God-like kind of thing. The only thing I wanted to ask him, what was his economic policy? Because all I'm really interested in <laughs> seriously is economics and the liberation of the human spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on. Do you think health care, do you think Obama's going to get a health care bill that will keep him politically solvent? Uh, this uh, the day after tomorrow or so by the day after I tomorrow so. or do you follow those things I, I the do. politics of the reality I do a little bit but not really yeah this is more but in I a creative realm yes yes it's more of a <coughs> creative realm and uh, but I know that people like you are you optimistic for the human prospect or not Absolutely. You are absolutely can yes, be sure you absolutely. are. You don't think we're going to destroy Evolution. our species? We have the ability no. now. Yes, we do, but we're uh -huh. not. Why? Because we have a protection of a higher power. So oh, because you, from that's realms. a wonderful thing to have as a, as a thought, and it, it motivates a lot. It's the basis of most all of our religious mm -hmm. notions and our churches and our synagogues and our mosques and everything like that. And it's important, I guess, as a salve 
to the, but I still think the problems are still political and economic, and that's the main problem. When people confronted. evolve morally, uh -huh. things are going to be. They will evolve morally when we evolve a, a, a liberating economic order so that everybody, every cell of the human organism is free to do what it is they want to do in a creative way rather than quasi slaves as they are now under the current system that continues out of the nightmare of history. And I don't want to go back to any past lives because it's <laughs> historical hate. All right. That's the end. Okay. The end. We end out of time. But anyway, so thank you.